Hello, dear friends. This is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad to be here and share with you again another word from the Word of God. Just a 10-minute message, I pray, will help change your life and bless your heart. I pray God's blessings on it in the name of Jesus, our beloved Lord. Amen. I want to speak to you on the fact that, that love is the greatest thing. Love is the greatest thing. I want to speak on the greatest thing that you can ever do. The greatest thing you can ever do is found over in the book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, and uh, 22nd chapter, I'm sorry. And in uh, verse 35 it says, They asked Jesus, What is the greatest commandment in all the law of God? What is the greatest commandment? And they, they were wondering, you know, if he's going to choose one of the Ten Commandments. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On well, these two hang, laws and commandments <coughs> hang all, <coughs> excuse me, hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, all the laws of God hang on those two commandments. Loving God, number one, and number two, loving others. Now this is the greatest thing that we can do, dear friends is to love God. The greatest thing you can do in your life is to love God, your Lord and your God, and to love others. That's the greatest thing that you can do. Now, God's, we need God's love to do this. God's love is not the love of the world. The love of the world is closer to lust, but the love of God is real love, a love that cares, a love that loves and cares and, and seeks after always those things that please God. Over in Romans in the 5th chapter in verse 8 it says this. It says that God that, that uh, has blessed us and our hope does not disappoint us. For God has shed abroad in our hearts the love of God uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so God has shed his love into your heart. If you're a Christian, you have the love of God inside of you. It's there. It's real. And it's active. And it's right there right now. The love of God. I want you to know it and express it and let it have its way in your thinking and your speaking and your decisions you make. Seek the love of God. And you do this by seeking to love others. Love others, and that's the way you love God, by loving others. Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep. You see, if you love him, care for others that belong to him. If you love the great shepherd, then feed his sheep, and that'll show your love for him. And that's important that we know this, and it's so important because God's love is sacrificial. And we read it with John 3:16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so God gave his Son for you, dear friend. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, I want you to pray a brief prayer with me so that you can know you're born again, belong to God, and you're on your way, and the Lord is yours, and you love Him. And He loves you very, very much. Pray this brief prayer, asking God to forgive you and Jesus to come into your heart. And then you can know you're on your way to heaven. Pray a prayer like this, and mean it from your heart. Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. I believe he paid for all my sins. I repent. And I'm trusting you. Please come into my heart. And help me live for you. As the Lord of my life. Amen. Pray a prayer like that. And you can know you'll live forever. And then find you a good church. Where you can worship God with his people. And read the Bible, a few verses every day, and pray. Pray as often as possible, because prayer can help so much. Troubles drive away prayer. Prayer drives away troubles. And so pray, and seek the face of God that loves you. And He does love you, and He cares for you, and He wants you to know that. And He is there to help you and to bless you. This, in this path is the way that men shall know that you love me when you love others. And that's important to know that. And when we do that and get that in our heart and our mind and our strength is, uh, is double because we love him. We love him because 
He first loved us. And so we thank God for that. His love is inexhaustible. It never, ever, ever fades. His love was ne never fades. Over in the book of Romans in the 8th chapter in verse 35 and 39 it says, Nothing, no, nothing present nor nothing to come shall separate us from the love of God. Not anything in this world or worlds to come, nor anything in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, it's in Christ, so you need to belong to Christ, and then you have the love of God. And nothing's going to separate you from that love. He loves you, He loves you, you become His child, He loves you. When my son was a little child, and I, I was there to try to help him, if he got criticized and he was really upset and hurt about something, I'd try to console him and tell him that he was very special. And then if he got hurt in any way, I tried to to, you know, help him to doctor him up a little bit and patch him up and, and any way I could help him if he was hurting and injured. Even to the point I'd take him to the hospital if I couldn't find a way to pray for his healing and to heal himself by what I could do. And then if he then if he was ever fearful, I'd always stand by him until he was and and and, and it comfort him until he could find and follow the way of peace and were able to go to bed at night without fear. Now, the Father in heaven is your Father. He cares more for you than you can ever care for your children. He cares more for me than I can ever care for my dear son. And yet he's there to help us when we're hurt and we're criticized. He's there to comfort us and to exhort us and to, and to encourage us. And when we get hurt, He's there to bind up the broken. He's there to heal our sickness. Oh, and when we are fearful, He's there to say, Be not afraid, I'm here. I'm right with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm going to be with you, and I'll be with you until the very end. And so that's very important. So very important. And I need to recognize that, and we need all of us to recognize how important it is when we find in the Word the way of the Lord. And that is really, really what we need. We need to recognize that and to, and to find out that He is there to help us and to bring us through every time. God is our portion. Love is the thing, dear friend. Greatest thing you can do is love. Love God and love others. The greatest thing you can do is to love others. Praise God. Love is the thing. Love is supreme. Sweeter it grows, glory bestows, bright like the sun, ever it glows. Love is supreme. Love is the theme. I want you to learn to love God and love others, and you can only do it by the love of God. And when you have the love of God in your heart, you can forgive. You can forgive because God forgives you. And you can go on loving others because you find love overcomes everything. You got a person that's hurting you and you have a enmity against them, pray for that person and ask God to help you to love that person. To love even the people that are against you. And you'll find peace and pretty soon you'll be able to love even those that are unlovely and even those who are your enemies until you find that real peace with God. And you'll say, Hallelujah, I'm learning to love. Learn to love, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord, help us to learn to love. One of, let me close with this thought. Uh, years and years ago there was a preacher in Scotland by the name of Andrew Murray McShaney and he was a great preacher he was a great preacher and God blessed him and blessed his messages and there was revival in Scotland and so someone asked later after his death what was it that that he exerted when he preached it was so made him so popular and so strong and someone said well he he preached as if when you listen to him you couldn't help but feel this man really loves me. He loves me. And he's preaching to me because he loves me. I want you to know that is the greatest thing in the world. I don't know you, dear friend. I've never met you. But I can tell you this. I love you. I love you because God's love is in me and I love you. And we love each other. We don't have to meet each other as, as, as personally, but we can love each other. And I love you because I'm meeting you on this little message on the YouTube. 
And God bless you. Learn to love God and to love your fellow man. And you'll find a way of life. In Jesus' name, amen.